Tonight, only on two, controversy brewing inside the Chicago Fire Department about a tragic incident that happened on Labor Day. It began with a firefighter leaving work to check on his family. It ended with his wife's death. Now, several high-ranking fire department sources have come forward with concerns about how the sensitive matter was handled internally. Here's CBS2 political investigator Dana Kozlov. Labor Day weekend, September 6th, 41-year-old Mary Jo Tokolos is home in Chicago's Mount Greenwood neighborhood with her two young children and a friend. Her husband, Chicago firefighter paramedic Angelo Tokolos, is on duty. But late that night, according to this police report, firefighter Tokolos says his seven-year-old daughter called, concerned Mary Jo was intoxicated. He leaves the firehouse, goes home, and puts the kids in the car to take them to his mother's. That's when Mary Jo runs to the SUV and firefighter Tokolos hits and kills her. Police later ruling it an accident. If he was mandated to stay at work, Mary Jo would have not been dead on Sunday night. Mandated to stay at work is exactly what should have happened, says this high-ranking fire department official, afraid to be identified for fear of retaliation. And this is just one of several fire department sources who've reached out to CBS2 with concerns about Mary Jo's death and questions about changes to Tokolas's time card after her death. And we're told those concerns are now reverberating through City Hall. The dots do not connect correctly. This official says once on duty, firefighters are not allowed to leave their shift. This internal CFD memo from April expressly states companies are prohibited from leaving the firehouse unless dispatched by the OEMC for emergency or other calls. Firefighters can trade shifts, but only 12 or 24 hours prior to the shift start. CFD spokesperson Larry Langford explicitly tells CBS2 firefighter Tokolas was off duty when he went home. Yet the police report from the incident states Tokolas told officers he was on duty at the time. So he's on duty. Something escalates and now all of a sudden we have to cover up the fact that we've allowed him to leave the firehouse, which is a break or a breach of protocol. One source was so concerned they gave us this, a screen grab of CFD's internal scheduling system which tracks shifts and hours. That source says six hours after Mary Jo died, someone went into the system and changed it to show an emergency trade had been made prior to Mary Jo's death. Tokolas is marked as having traded his shift at 10.30 the night he hit and killed his wife. But our source says the red circle with an X and black one with a question mark next to Tokolas's name and the name of his replacement raise red flags. That simply means that whoever has the authority to manipulate telestaff did an illegal move. That's what that means. It's not allowed. Not allowed. And only a high-ranking individual with clearance to manipulate telestaff after hours could have done that. Our source also says the small marking next to his replacement's name raises another concern. The question mark is indicative that that person has not been checked in. All of our multiple sources are concerned about why all of this was done in reaction to a tragic accident. After repeated emails, that fire department spokesperson says Tokolos did everything by the book. He followed protocol and his supervisor ensured a replacement was found so that he could leave the firehouse immediately. A spokesperson for Mary Jo's family says her family still has many questions about her death and the circumstances surrounding it, but they are still grieving and did not want to comment at this time. On the city's northwest side, Dana Kozlov, CBS2 News. Chicago Police Department spokesperson tells CBS2 the investigation into her death has been closed.